wonderful person, this is Anton, and welcome to Mars and yet another CO2 experiment where we're going to try to, well, maybe terraform Mars using carbon dioxide? Let's see if we can do it. Welcome to What the Math. Now the thing about Universe Sandbox Square is that it has an amazing CO2 simulator included in it, but unfortunately it's only available for Earth. It's not actually present on Mars. So we're going to do something a little bit different. We're actually going to go to the solar system simulation and we're going to change our planet Earth into Mars. We're basically are going to Marsify Earth. Yes, that's right, you heard it here first, Marsify. We're basically are going to change the settings of Earth into Mars and then try to reverse all of this, or basically try to terraform uh, Mars-like Earth by using this right here, the greenhouse gases. Let's start by basically looking at the mass and the size and the density of Earth and changing it to the one uh, of Mars. So we change the mass of Earth uh, by about factor of 10-ish, making it uh, 8.7 masses of Moon or essentially about 10% of the original mass. We also changed its density to uh, be a bit lower and now we're going to change its orbit and place it where Mars currently is. So that's about 1.52 astronomical units with eccentricity of about 0.09. So there we go. This is our Marsified Earth. Uh, it still doesn't look like Mars, but we're going to remove Mars now and essentially focus on our newly created Earths and watch what's going to happen to it in a few days. It's going to start changing quite dramatically. And because we have climate enabled here, it will actually take some time, but let's actually accelerate time just so you can see how it's actually going to start freezing. You can see temperature already decreasing and at some point it's basically going to uh, drop in temperature quite a lot. One thing I forgot to do and I'm going to do right now is of course remove the atmospheric pressure and make the atmosphere uh, closer to that of Mars. So we're going to give it about 1% of the atmosphere it currently has, which means that not only will it get super cold here, but it will obviously be almost impossible to breathe. So right now the temperature is dropping like crazy, Greenhouse effect has dropped just a little bit, uh, but not by much. And so we're now going to have the atmospheric surface pressure of just like one hundredth of what we used to have. And in a few seconds, you'll see Earth transforming into a big ice ball like you see right there in the top right corner. And here we go. You can already see all of the ice forming everywhere as Earth drops in temperature quite a lot. And there you are, frozen ice ball of Earth. Now the temperature here will actually drop even more to possibly even lower than 49 degrees Celsius, uh, but it will stay around 49 to 55, minus 49 to minus 55 degrees Celsius. So here is our Marsified Earth. Doesn't look like Mars at all, obviously, but that's because I decided not to actually remove water from it. I decided to keep water because we know that Mars has quite a lot of water deposited both in the, uh, north and south pole regions but also underneath the actual surface so there's quite a lot of water on mars there's also some or quite a lot of carbon dioxide there so there's a way for us to somehow release all of this and how do we release this well let's just say that one day we find that we can actually um, create a lot of factories and industries on mars in other words we're going to pollute Mars. We're going to release as many greenhouse gases as we can in the same way that we're doing here on Earth. We're going to turn Mars into an industrial area and release greenhouse gases until they basically cannot be released anymore. Uh, in other words, we're going to increase the PPMV level to the max. And if you've watched one of the previous carbon dioxide experiment videos, uh, well, we can't really go over 40,000. This is sort of the limit to um, our breathing ability. It has to be around 35,000 for us to actually not die and suffocate in that environment. Uh, here we can actually change the emissions, make them much higher. This is going to be in um, 30 uh, gigaton of carbon per year. And there's no deposition because there's no actual 
um, plants or life to actually uh, absorb carbon dioxide. So we're going to assume that all of these factories are producing tremendous amounts of carbon, and you'll see it increasing right here quite a lot. It's going to jump every single year. So let's say we're releasing this carbon dioxide. Um, now let's actually take a look at, well, so the temperature here is still low and the greenhouse still, effect is still low. So now let's take a look at how we're going to release the atmospheric um, components so that we can create a breathable or at least thick enough atmosphere for us to survive in. So the atmospheric pressure for us has to be at least 0.8 of the original atmosphere on Earth, or I guess at least 0.6, but 0.8 would be more comfortable. So let's just say we find a way to release a lot of various gases here to basically melt the ice caps and to kind of start releasing gas somehow. And we make it to about 0.9-ish, which will actually start decreasing a little bit, but we make it to um, 0.9 of atmospheres. And we also find a way to construct the artificial um, magnetosphere around Mars, making it about 10% of that on Earth. So this will be about 0.0319 Gauss. And so there you can kind of see there's a bit of magnetosphere around this uh, beautiful planet that should now be actually called Mars and not Earth. This is our new Mars that's about to be terraformed or we're going to try to terraform it using carbon dioxide. All right, so we have everything said. We have a bit of atmosphere. This factory is working and releasing tremendous amounts of CO2 into the air. And now we have to think about some other components here. So our, while our factories are pumping all of this uh, greenhouse, we're going to take a look at some other in important stuff for us to actually consider. One of them is actually um, right here under heat capacity. So heat capacity of air on Earth is 1420, approximately 1420 um, joules per kilogram degree. On, um, the same thing for water is about 3850 uh, or 3831 in this game. So in other words, water can actually um, maintain a lot more heat than air. In reality, water actually is responsible for heating up our planet a lot more than air. So the heat capacity of water is extremely important. But since there is no liquid water on Mars, it's only the air we're going to be taking a look at. But currently on Mars, this value is actually very, very low. I'm going to show you how low it is uh, by basically placing a random Mars right here and just taking a look at uh, this value under climate. So you can see that heat capacity of air on Mars is only 214. It's essentially like five to six times lower. That's of course because the atmospheric pressure on Mars is very, very low. And so here we can actually increase uh, this value, which would also increase the value of um, the greenhouse effect, as a matter of fact, or just increase the surface temperature. We can basically increase this by releasing certain elements into the atmosphere. Now, things like methane and uh, carbon dioxide and, and water vapor, they increase the greenhouse effect, but they do not, do not increase the heat capacity. What would increase heat capacity are things like nitrogen, which our Earth has quite a lot, but more specifically things like uh, certain noble gases, like for example, neon and xenon. If we can actually somehow find a way to release a lot of neon here and a lot of xenon, which would actually not fly away at all from, from this planet, we could increase this to like 1600, maybe even 1660, because that's their heat capacity. And look at that, as soon as I do that, you kind of start seeing a little bit of patches showing up. So Earth kind of suddenly increased a bit of its temperature, and that's because we increased the heat capacity. Uh, we're also going to be able to maybe increase the greenhouse even further by somehow r releasing methane, but we don't really know if there is an, a lot of methane on the surface of Mars. We've seen some methane, we just don't know how much of it is there. So we have to basically rely on carbon dioxide. So let's say we do this for like 10 years and we are able to release at least 20,000 um, ppmv of carbon dioxide. In other words, it's, it's a very, very large amount of carbon dioxide that has been released by our, by our factories. Um, essentially, this is like 50 times higher than there currently is on our planet Earth. So basically, we're polluting the planet to the max. And let's see how, um, how high this temperature will go. We're currently at minus 42 degrees Celsius. It's still kind of increasing, but not very fast because I've enabled realistic climate simulation. But I'm going to run this for a few years and we're going to see how high it goes. 
and it didn't really go up by that much. It's sort of uh, around minus 39 degrees Celsius, and then in the winter it goes down a little bit lower. So this didn't really help us that much. We need to release a lot more carbon dioxide. Let's actually go to the limit. Let's go to like 39,000. Basically, we, sc we can still kind of breathe, but not for a long time. As a matter of fact, we might have to stop uh, releasing so much stuff on, on Mars very soon because uh, we're reaching 40,000, which is the limit of um, our ability to breathe in such an environment. And the temperature will start changing again, but let's see how, how high it actually goes. And it looks like with that value, we were able to get about 10 degrees or possibly maybe 11 degrees. We're now at minus 20... 9-ish degrees Celsius, maybe minus 30. Oh, look at that, minus 28. Still increasing. So I'm going to wait a little bit more. I've uh, run this simulation quite a few times, and this value does seem to kind of deviate a little bit, depending on how you set up the original simulation. But let's let's actually wait a little bit longer and see um, how much temperature we can get out of 39,000 ppmv with um, relatively okay-ish atmosphere, and uh, let's see if we can maybe even take it closer to zero degrees. And it looks like for some time now I've been stuck at the same temperature. It goes between about 28.5, minus 28.5, and minus 26.7. Now that's with the almost extreme level of 39,000 ppmv. Basically, this is the limit of um, the maximum possible carbon dioxide before we start suffocating and dying. And on, at the same time, uh, this is using a relatively high heat capacity of air and also assuming that the actual atmospheric pressure here is very close to atmospheric pressure on Earth. In other words, carbon dioxide um, alone is not enough for us to, to get that necessary temperature. We do need to bring in some other gases like methane and possibly water uh, vapor as well, or find a way to increase the heat capacity of air even higher, maybe through some kind of artificial means that we don't really have just yet. All right, so can we actually terraform this, turn this into like zero degrees? Well, let's think about what else we can do. One thing we can do is obviously increase the atmospheric pressure. So let's just say this is going to be three atmospheric pressures. Maybe this will actually help us get the temperature a little bit higher. So basically, if we release even more gases. We can also maybe increase the heat capacity of air to about 2,000 through some sort of artificial means of future science fiction here. And even that doesn't seem to be enough. The temperature here is still about minus 25 degrees Celsius, meaning that we need to improvise even more. We have to find a way to warm up this planet so that its albedo actually decreases. And in other words, it starts reflecting less light and warms up the surface. So maybe just maybe we'll do something more extreme here. We're going to go all out and increase PPMV to the max. Let, well, not to the max, but let's actually increase it to like 100,000. Obviously, we can't breathe on this planet, but we're just trying to warm it up so that it actually starts melting all of this ice. And so it starts uh, reflecting less light. So let's keep increasing this until basically it gets to the point where uh, it gets warm enough. So we're going to kind of keep going up and up. And you can see it's definitely influencing the temperature. It's already at minus 20-ish, minus 19 now. Let's keep going to like uh, 500,000. This is way, way over the limit of humans being able to breathe. But here we're just, at this point, we're just worried about this not being a warm enough planet. We just want to warm it up. So let's see how high I have to go to make this like zero degrees, basically. And at close to 3 million uh, gigatons of carbon released, or 700,000 ppmv, we're getting closer and closer to that needed value. So we're now at like minus 7 uh, degrees Celsius. It's going to minus 6 now. And the albedo will start changing any second now. And let's just for fun go all the way to a million. Million ppmv. This is crazy, crazy high. This is basically almost entirely... Uh, carbon dioxide. So basically, million parts per million of vol volumes, essentially pure carbon dioxide. And uh, this is what we're going to get. We're going to get a temperature of close to about zero degrees Celsius, possibly. It's at minus three now. You can see that a lot of the continents have already sort of reappeared. Water is liquid in a lot of parts of the planet, and there's a lot of water everywhere. But even with a million ppmv, we can't seem to get to that zero degrees Celsius. It looks like we're going to be stuck at like minus one to minus two degrees. And that's because of two things, uh, or two, I guess, two reasons. One is that Mars is about 
um, 1.5 astronomical units away from from the sun. Uh, so in other words, it's about 150% farther away from the sun than Earth. So, and it's also smaller in size, so it receives significantly less sunlight. Because of that, it's kind of harder to warm it up. So it's actually, even with an Earth-like um, atmospheric pressure, it's still going to be really, really cold here. On the other hand, Mars also uh, doesn't seem to have many ways to maintain that heat, so we had to create a lot of artificial ways to uh, keep it hot, and one of those ways was to add a tremendous amount of carbon dioxide here. This will then have to be reabsorbed for us to basically breathe here, but I, until we warm this up and until we create a, a world where we can actually live, it's going to have to be an atmosphere basically almost entirely made of carbon dioxide. And that's essentially how powerful carbon dioxide really is in warming things up. We went from like, what, 40,000 to a million and the temperature increased by about um, maybe 30 degrees Celsius. We're actually going to go back in a second just to see how it freezes again. But that's essentially maybe one of the ways we could try to terraform Mars. Get it, uh, give it some pressure first and then release a tremendous amount of carbon dioxide through nothing but pollution. Maybe make a bunch of factories here, create a huge industrial complex, release carbon dioxide, warm it up, and then try to reabsorb all of this back into Earth somehow. Now let's go back to the more realistic value, or let's, let's actually go back to the value that we have on Earth right now. Currently it's 407 ppmv. It is pretty high, but not as high as we had here, which was a million. And let's see what happens to the temperature. Watch the temperature of this fake Mars change as we change the ppmv back to its original value. We're going to, going to actually enable the temperature graph here and uh, accelerate time. So let's go back to what, like months per second and watch the temperature plummet. This only took like a year for it to go down to minus 15. Every year it goes down by about two degrees. And that's essentially because there is no more carbon dioxide in the air to maintain the heat, the power of greenhouse gases. Well, anyway, I guess I kind of succeeded in terraforming this Earth Mars that I had, and I totally forgot to rename it to Mars again. Let's make it Mars. Um, but on the other hand, this also kind of gave you an idea of how powerful CO2 actually is and how powerful its um, warming effects are on our own planet. Anyway, so that was CO2 experiment number three. Check out number one and two if you still haven't, and uh, consider subscribing if you still haven't either. In the next video tomorrow, we're going to learn something else. So come back tomorrow and we're going to have fun together. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And you, dear Earth-like Mars or Marth-like Earth, let's actually uh, move you much closer to the sun, to where Venus is, and see what happens then. And in the location of Venus, within uh, three, four years, it gets to a ridiculously hot temperature. So now my Earth is going to get super, super hot. It's already at 40, 50, 60 degrees Celsius. Wow, that's extreme. Looks like the whole water thing is going to boil. And it looks like now we're on the opposite side of the spectrum. The water is boiling away and is a little bit too hot here. Well, that's the power of sunlight.